today on an all-new Dr. Phil. I'm 43 years old. I've been trying to become a rock star my entire life. It's rock and roll or bust. I'm not too hard on the eyes, you know. You're pretty proud of the way you turned out. Is this wannabe rocker? I want everybody to come and worship it all. Yeah, I just threw it from my mouth a little bit. <laughs> Hitting rock bottom. You're living with your mother. I think he's full of himself. I love this woman more than anything. Even more than yourself? Uh, uh that's a tough one. Seriously. Shut up. You're such a jerk. Can a real rock star please welcome Gene Simmons? Make him face the music. You're a good looking guy. You'll be very popular in jail, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I'll try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. A 2,500 square foot state of the art studio worth $100,000. 60 guitars, some so rare, they're worth over $25,000, and a drum set worth over 30 grand. Who does it belong to? Bon Jovi's drummer? The band Kiss? Nope. All this belongs to a 43 year old wannabe rock star named Chris. And the operative word is a wannabe rock star. He says he has been chasing fame all of his life and wants it so badly. Drum roll, please. He says, and I quote, I would kill my mom if it meant I could get famous. He's joking, he's not a murderer, but that's how much he wants to be famous. Chris says there is no way he could settle for being just one of the band. He wants to be the lead, the rock star, front and center with private jets and Ferraris. Now to pursue this dream, he says he has been conning his parents and countless female admirers for decades. His parents are fed up. They want him out the door. Chris is weeks away from being homeless and admits that he might have to finally give up his rock star dream before he hits rock bottom. I've been chasing this rock star dream for 30 years. I'm addicted to fame. I'm addicted to wanting to be somebody. To hear this song on the radio. My addiction is a drug. That feeling you get when you perform the adulation, it's like no other. I believe in God. I believe in two gods, Gene and Paul. I belong to the Church of Kiss. I've sacrificed everything. My rock career hasn't worked out the way I thought it would. Maybe it's not meant to be. My parents have given me half a million dollars, eight, nine, ten vehicles to help me pursue my dreams. I've collected 100 guitars, 10 drum sets, keyboard. I mean, I'm arena ready. Unfortunately, I'm playing at the local gas station while people fill up, but it looks cool. This is my uh, room. Right now, I'm living at my parents' home. But this is not really where I want my life to go. Lonely. Sad. Uh, my parents are moving in about six weeks. Uh, at that point, I'm literally going to be homeless. I've dated Christine going on almost seven years, and we've been engaged for three. Christine has loaned me money to buy beautiful guitar, equipment, jewelry, clothes. Christine gave me an ultimatum, change my career or lose her. Rockstar Chris is driven by the 15-year-old who has the pedal to the metal, laser all the way down, he's in charge. 43-year-old Chris loves this woman, has children and dogs, and likes to snow blow the driveway. I guess what I want to know is, is it time to give up the dream? Okay, so you want to be famous. 
I want to be somebody. Describe your famous life. Let's say it had worked out where you had gotten big time famous. What would your life be like? Oh, God. I mean, I love the lights and the people. Hi, everybody. I mean, I love Dr. Phil. I love it all. I want a nice car. I love nice clothes. I love good food. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not cut out for the college of learning or life. I'm, I fly by the seat of my pants. I jump off the cliff. And I hope the parachute stores open on the way down. You don't seem I'm, to yeah, have a very no. good definition of success. I've never been successful. I've, I've been but so But you don't even close. know what the target is? Oh, I think I'd like to not worry about <clears throat> money. I think I'd like to be able to take care of people instead of have people taking care of me, obviously. Um, you know, it is at a certain point I think you do have to grow up. I was hoping that I wouldn't have to ever grow up because I would have the finances. You did give me some specifics when we talked to you before the show in our pre-interview. You said you wanted to be a rock god. You said you wanted to be the center of attention. You wanted adulation. You wanted Ferraris. You wanted private jets. You want the rock star lifestyle, of course. I mean, you have to have that. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, yes, to be an icon, not to be just another you know, drummer in some band that no one cares about. You know, I want my own pinball machine. What do you mean you want your own pinball machine? I want my own pinball. I want branding. I want branding. You know, Kiss has a pinball machine. Just ask Gene. Gene's a very successful person. Um, so there is a, Gene. There's a Gene Simmons. From Kiss. From Kiss, yes. As I've you gotten, want to be like Gene. Ha, I want to be like Gene. You look good, your hair's perfect, you got the best boots on, the guitars are flashy, you'll be just fine. <laughs> Snakeskin. Who, who, They're real. Built who, in Toronto. Who, 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 bought, who bought those boots? Ah, oh, God, who bought those boots? I don't know. Some lady. Some other woman like your mother? Oh, my mom, girlfriends. Uh, How many girlfriends have you had? Well, define girlfriend. You define girlfriend. Girlfriend? Girlfriend is a female. How, how many women have you... Um, had carnal take it, knowledge take, of. Taken to, take to the uh, dry cleaners? Um, I don't know, four or five hundred. Is that part of the rock star lifestyle? Yeah, that's part of the whole, uh, you know, love them and leave them and, yeah, the persona. What you think, when, when you're growing up watching all those videos in the 80s, all the 80s children out there, it was just presented. That's how it looks, man. Fast cars and beautiful women and have everything you want. So I'm like, I can play the drums, and I can play the guitar, and I'm not, I'm not too hard on the eyes, you know? So, why not? You're pretty proud of the way you turned out. I want everybody to come and love it all, worship it all. You strike these poses. You, you know, it's like you're, you're, it's like you're in a, a, it's my a photo it's shoot. My, yeah, it's my, yeah, exactly. It's my performance. It's, uh, it's over the top. Sometimes yeah. uh, there's a little bit too much frosting, and you need a little bit more cake. <laughs> What the hell are you talking about? You don't understand the rock lingo? Yeah, I just threw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> you gotta rock that pocket of puke, man. You gotta rock it. I might be a little narcissistic. I'm an only child. You're living with your mother. Well, yeah, I was kicked out of my fiance's house uh, a couple months ago, and then... Yeah, I call it a twin bed at your mom's house. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I like to put um, a spin on everything, but yeah, it's a twin bed at my mom's house. Yeah, so they've spent a lot of money. You know, the, the thing is, is people have believed in me, and people have helped me, many people, and, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's timing. I believe... If I was successful, you have people that have backed you that said, oh, we knew you could do it, you got it. And then if you don't make it, you got that, you know, same people going, oh, you didn't listen, you didn't, we, we tried, and, and you're just a failure, and you brought this on yourself. I think everybody can relate to that. Let me play this little that. two or three second clip out of the piece that y'all have already seen. Christine has loaned me money to buy a beautiful guitar, beautiful guitar, beautiful guitar, beautiful okay. guitar, beautiful. Something about a guitar. Why do you suppose I isolated that piece? Um, I think it's part of my persona. If I see something or like something, one's never enough. Um, you know, I think I, I found joy and happiness in obtaining. Um, when we show up, we show up like we're playing an arena, even though we're maybe playing a school. <laughs> Yeah, that's not even close. Okay, uh, <laughs> next, wait until you hear why Chris kept his relationship with his ex-fiancee a secret for three years. 
Notice I said ex fiance, and we're going to find out how she reacted. We'll be right back. I don't think he is talented enough to be the front man and the superstar that he wants to be. Chris is definitely a narcissist. Chris kept me hidden for the first three years of our relationship because he didn't want his fan base to know that he had a girlfriend. And later, please welcome my good friend of KISS, Gene Simmons. on an all-new Dr. Phil. A 560-pound man is riding his bike across America. A man on a mission? You raised a bunch of money from people for conning the country. This turned into a crowdfunding vacation. You've been in Florida for three months. I was doing five miles a day. Five miles a day? Here's my town. I can ride down Sunset to Doheny, and that's five miles. Right. I'm still home! Then on Tuesday, a neighbor's feud. They set a mortar shell off in the backyard. Not true. Turns into a war. You say she asked if you were into swinging. For real? For real, yeah. You're sick. That's Tuesday. Hey, Dr. Phil. I'm 43 years old, and I've been trying to become a rock star my entire life. It's my passion, it's my dream, but mostly it's my complete addiction. I really could use some help getting my life in order. I've lost my family, the woman of my dreams, and my 13-year-old beautiful daughter. I hope you can help. Rock on, man. Well, Chris says he's been chasing rock stardom since he was four years old, and now at the age of 43, still can't give up the dream. His ex fiance Christine, got tired of his excuses for not contributing to the household, and recently, well, she just kicked him to the curb. Take a look. Chris is definitely a narcissist and a spoiled only child that his parents have been enabling his entire life. I don't think he is talented enough to be the front man and the superstar that he wants to be. I really don't think his voice is good enough. Welcome to Superstar, Lost and Found. Chris kept me hidden for the first three years of our relationship because he didn't want his fan base to know that he had a girlfriend because that would affect his ability to be the rock star that he needs to be. That made me feel terrible. Chris has anger issues. Chris has always hated his life. He's always been very depressed. He will scream and yell and kick and act like he's throwing a temper tantrum if something doesn't go his way. Chris is terrible with money. We wanted to save for a wedding, a future, and I couldn't get him to put even $5 in a bank towards that because all his extra money goes towards musical equipment. I've given Chris a lot of ultimatums over the years. The only thing I ever wanted for Chris was for him to move on and become a responsible person. Let's talk about glory. Chris promised me when he was turning 40 that he was going to abandon the rock dream and he was going to start living like a responsible adult. I am at an age where I need to start worrying about my own future. I am not getting any younger. I would never even consider getting back together with Chris unless I saw him make major changes in his life. Another pose. Um, so you don't think he's got the voice to be a front man? Uh, no, I don't think he has the voice to be a front man. I think he's got a lot of passion, but I don't think he's all that he thinks he is. I think he's full of himself. Yeah. To the point that um, it's dysfunctional? He's, he's very dysfunctional, yeah. Yeah. Why do you think he's here today? Do you think he's here today? Because he wants to be on TV. Because he wants to be on TV, or you think he's here to get help? I think a little of both. I think his first thing, when, very first time I ever met him, told me about his days on Young and the Restless and what he did in L.A., and he said, and Dr. Phil has been wanting me on his show. See, that was it, a very it happened. That was I was six, right. That was six years ago yeah, he well, said that. I don't actually remember saying that, but it's possible. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I love the Dr. Phil show. I just, uh, you know, I, 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 I love this woman more than anything. and um, Even more than yourself? 
Uh, that's a tough one. It's a tough one, man. Seriously. You do have a daughter. I do. And she's... 13. Uh-huh. How you doing on being a dad? Um, I was a great dad. I um, got to see her half the time. Um, I was a full-time, half-time dad. And then uh -huh. the other half-time, I was a full-time trying to rock the world guy. So you're not with her a lot now? I don't get to see her much. I get to see her maybe, um, maybe three days a month. Why not? Why? You said you were a half-time dad. Why now just three days a month? But a lot of it probably comes from my narcissistic personality of me coming before everybody. In fact, you said you put your needs above your daughter's. I believe I have, yeah. You said, but as soon as you get famous, you'll buy her anything, so it'll be OK. Yeah, I'm starting to learn that buying people stuff doesn't make, uh, make anything better. Well, you said that 36 hours ago. Yeah, yeah. So no, you've learned no. that in the last day and a half? I, you watch these things, and you start going, hmm, maybe this isn't quite the way to be. But I can't stop, man. I, I, I want this. Isn't it just possible that you've been chasing this dream so hard that you're missing your whole real life? I mean, you, you, there may be, you, there may be a r real you that is not disgustingly obnoxious. There may be a real you that you really like. Look, I'm a big one for you got a star in your own life. Right. But you're making yours a, a tragic comedy. You got a star in your own life in an authentic way. You, the reason I loop that, I, 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 I love this beautiful guitar. I, I've gone through everything you've said so far, and I read words, fame, adulation, star, be somebody, look cool, arena ready. And you know what I never heard you say? What? Is that you wanted to make good music. <laughs> yeah. right. That's fair. Next, we're going to find out why Chris's parents are furious with him and say it's all his fault that they have to move out of their beautiful home of more than 20 years. We'll be right back. He's probably got more equipment than Bon Jovi. Chris has not paid us back. I couldn't say no. Chris has taken advantage of his mom for the last 30 years. And later... Have your day job. I mean, you can be Superman, but for God's sakes, even he's Clark Kent. Get a damn job and pay back everybody all their money. This February, beautiful twin sisters. These two needles are like my children. Hitting rock bottom. You said we're out hooking for drugs, and we get more because we're twins. I would do anything to have them back. But they can't. Oh, my God. Do not make excuses for these girls to their sisters. More emotion. More surprises. More drama. And we're just getting started. I had a traumatized three-year-old girl saying, my daddy hurt me. Where is he going to hurt you at? A child does not say those things unless she was coached. You cannot coach a three-year-old. Ask anyone. That is coaching. I came here to help my daughter, and you turned this into a giant circus. I'm done. I broke up with Chris. He thinks we're still engaged, but we're not. That was final. He refused to leave to the point where he put a ladder up to my windows and jimmied his way in to my house. He said that since his driver's license has that address on it, he had a right to be there. Chris says his addiction to stardom has consumed him his entire life. He claims he has used everyone, especially his parents, to feed his rock and roll lifestyle. His stepfather, Owen, and his mother says they are tired of Chris's mooching. Take a look. Chris is obsessed with fame, and he's done this since he was seven years old. I've been coddling my son for 44 years. I believe that Chris needs to pursue a more realistic goal rather than just be a superstar. Welcome to Superstar. I built a complete music studio here to help Chris pursue his dream, teach music, earn some money. He's probably got more equipment than Bon Jovi. Chris has not paid his back. 
Chris is now living with us for a short time. My husband said that Chris conned me into moving back in. I couldn't say no. Chris has taken advantage of his mom for the last 30 years. He knows how to push her buttons. Now, I call it emotional blackmail. It makes me angry. He's a manipulator, and he's good at it, and I fall for it. Now we've sold our home that we've been in for the last 20 years. It was a way to get rid of Chris. It's not normal for a 44-year-old man to be living with his mother. Chris is the biggest problem in our marriage. I have been so tempted just to say, enough is enough. I'm walking out. There's not room for three of us here. My biggest fear would be I'll never get rid of him. Thank you two for being here. You said something on your tape that stuck out in my mind. You said it's just not normal for a 44-year-old to be living with his mother. Correct. Well, it's not normal for a mother to be supporting their 44-year-old son. I totally agree. So how, how, so Owen's going to love me when this is over. Um, <laughs> so how, you said he cons you. How does he do it? He's sweet. He's, uh, he keeps pushing me and pushing me. I just give in. I tried my best. And even then, I had no idea that the great con artist he was. He's so yeah. good at it. But do you think you've allowed this to go on to his detriment? I have. I have no, I've had no strength. I always believe him. Don't ask why I believe him, but I always believe him, and I know it's wrong. Why do you think I say it's to his detriment? Because look at... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's been, they've been very supportive. Oh, and I don't think you think it's supportive at all. I think you think it undermines him standing on his own, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it, it has for all these years, for 30 years. Uh, uh, Deanne has never allowed Chris to uh, mow a lawn, uh, do anything normal. Uh, she's, always, she's got better excuses for Chris than Chris has for himself. I actually think... All, all of his narcissism aside, he, he obviously is, is a very charming guy. Right. He Thank obviously you. is has a personality. He, he obviously has a sense of humor. He's, he's, he's got a, a lot of characteristics that, if applied in the right place, in the right time, in the right way... He clearly has an energy to succeed in his life. There's no doubt about that. I agree. Thank he, he could definitely be a success. I, I don't know where it would be or what it would be at, but he clearly has so many assets and, and attributes. But let me tell you, you can't buy success in the music business. You can't buy success in acting. You can't buy success in television. No book. The... the the public votes, they, they've, they're the ones that determine You can't determine that. You can't... I mean, he's got more guitars. He's got a bigger studio. He's got a drum set that looks like the Star Trek. I mean, <laughs> but it doesn't matter if nobody wants to hear him play it. Bad publicity is publicity. Oh, you're such a jerk. I just feel totally used. It's not funny. Enough. It's not funny. We're trying to save your life. Well, it's real don't life. you get it? And later... I would say my songs are the best thing about me. The no. best? Really? Not, yeah. not a father? You don't bleed your mother of all of her money so you can go out and be a poser. Be a man. Get a job. I made a list of the items that he has conned from people. Not earned, but conned from people. From stepdad, funds to start the band, 2,500 square foot music studio, music equipment, money for daughter, rent, clothes, spending money, travel expenses, gas, car, medical insurance, medications, private high school and college courses, a million dollars this totals up to. A million dollars. From Dan, funds for demo CD, guitars and drums, drum set. We're talking $30,000 drum set. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not funny. Not funny. Well, you know, I mean, 
It's the game. It's the it's the whole yeah. point of you know they support me and they love me, but then things don't happen, and then it's that whole back back point. The, it's all about the frills. It's not about the. the From various thing. women, help running the band, investment money, <laughs> PR, clothes, guitars, drums, fancy dinners, vacation, car payments. Rent money, couple hundred grand. From Christine, clothes, jewelry, guitars, cash, 20 grand. We're talking a total here of $1,720,000 that I can add up. That Let me tell you, if you can't take a million seven and get some traction, yeah. uh, you're either the dumbest marketer in the history of the world or... You just don't have what the public is looking for. I think it's timing. It's that personality that came out at the beginning of your show. That's what that's what the public sees, and that's what's not appealing. If he would, you know, <clears throat> concentrate more on the music and the good qualities that he actually has in him. I agree. But what you saw is what he puts out there. Good publicity, bad publicity, it's publicity, you know? You know, you're such a jerk. Yeah, well. <laughs> Sorry. You know, not even funny. And he laughs. Yeah. You know what? I love him so much, and I feel totally used that he could be that yeah. manipulative and yeah. such a liar and somebody you can't count on. I can't count on him for anything. I mean, I, you know, I do all this stuff for him, and I asked him to sweep the floor for me. Okay, Mom, never happens. Maybe once in a blue moon. Never. Yeah, it's tough, tough for me to get those things done. Tough Shut for me up. To... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's, it's not funny. Enough. It's enough. not funny. We're trying to save your life. Well, it's real don't life. you get it? It's real life. Do you have any feeling at all about the fact that, it, that your mother here is in the autumn years of her life and... You have bled her of hundreds of thousands of dollars that constitute the security for these years in her life that are the fruits of her hard work and labor throughout her life that would allow her to live with comfort that you've bled off of her do you... Remorse? Do you have any uh, feelings about that? I've probably... Recently, yes. It, it has bothered me, but the addiction keeps me going. They'll be, they'll be okay. They're successful. You know. You don't worry about them? Of course he I worry about them. He doesn't. Or you don't care? Listen, no, I, he I've... Let me tell you, I feel bad about it, and I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I sit there and... I, I sit there and, and, and look at you, and I, I, I've, I just feel terrible. Thank you. <laughs> and... I love these women in my life, but, you know, like she says, I'm, not phys I'm, I'm physically there, but I'm not emotionally there. I don't know why. I mean, I can't, you know, I used to think, okay, I buy, them, buy, her, buy her beautiful jewelry Wait, and all Has it things. occurred to you that you just maybe aren't talented in the music no, that you're playing? No, absolutely not. <laughs> okay. All right. Absolutely not. People, all right, next, what Chris is asking for now, uh, you, can you, I, can won't, I, you won't believe. Uh, we'll be right back. Go take it. You have to work to get ahead. Hey. And that's what you don't want. To I've do. always had a you job. Just, now you want 90 grand for what? <laughs> Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is he biking cross-country to lose weight? You raised a bunch of money. Or to scam America? He's hardly riding. He's eating trash food. This is a scale. Step on. That's Monday. I wrote a song about Christine. It's called Dirty Christine. And it's a song about just connecting a real deep, passionate song about making love with somebody and you're just one. Even though it's dirty, it just means she's just so open and it's a very sexual song. She's a bitch and I'm a bitch. In no way is this offensive. I celebrate women. She does like the song. 
Well, Chris says he has been chasing the fame train for the last 30 years. He says he has manipulated countless women and even his own parents to fund his rock and roll lifestyle. Now you want 90 grand for what? Ha <laughs> <laughs> um, ha! Well, I, I wanna, I need to focus my energy on something. You wanna be a helicopter pilot? I wanna pilot. be a helicopter pilot. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna fly people around LA. I don't think I'd want you flying my helicopter. <laughs> Yeah, well, well, I no, just let's, might be, let's you never be know. Real. You know, it's, never all, be... it's all about the title and not about the substance. It's not about flying people around, like Dr. Phil said. It's, it's not about the music, it's about you. You have to work to get ahead. Hey. And that's what you don't want to do. I've always had a you job. You just want to be. I've always had a job. There. Maybe so, you just don't have the talent for this particular thing. It's possible. But you say it's just timing. You've been at it for. How long? I understand what you're saying, but it's also a music business that doesn't exist anymore. You know, my song's been playing on the radio at home. People love them. Uh, I'm psychology and I Pass. talk about it, so maybe Pass. I don't have expertise in the music business, but I have a lot of friends in the music business and I, I talk to them, I ask people about these things, and I have somebody here I want Chris to meet. His band has sold over 100 million CDs and DVDs worldwide. He's celebrating the 40th year and continues to sell out stadiums and arenas. Breaking box office records set by Elvis and the Beatles. They were inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2014. Please welcome my good friend of KISS, Gene Simmons. <laughs> Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you. Oh, great demon. Hi, good looking. How's it going, baby? Um, baby. <laughs> baby. Maybe you should be a comedian. I uh, came to America as an eight and a half year old immigrant with my mother. And you've got a sob story. Mine's much bigger than yours. My mother was a concentration camp survivor at 14. So if we're going to play Mine's Bigger Than Yours, it actually mine is. And I came to... Absolutely, absolutely, I came... absolutely. The book was phenomenal. I read it five times. But I'm, but I'm actually here to support you, so just hold on right. with the, uh, the bumps here. So I, you are a powerful and attractive man. Thank you. Okay, but that's genes. Other than that, it's your responsibility to do something with that God-given gift. So... Uh, and I'm not, I'm not playing, you know, anything for them. I'm just telling you my story. So I started off not being able to speak English, and it was my inferred fiduciary duty. It was my responsibility to learn the language, learn people skills, go to school, become... I started working at 12 years of age, never borrowed a dime. I taught sixth grade in Spanish Harlem, was the assistant to the director of the Puerto Rican Interagency Council in, in New York City, a government research and demonstration project. Man Friday for the editor of Vogue magazine, Ad Infinitum Ad Nauseum. And on the side, I had just as big of a delusional notion about myself as you do. And I'm here you to... save your money. Saved every... Yes, I am Jewish. <laughs> and, and I'm here to tell you that I fully support... I was watching backstage, and I think Dr. Phil does what he does best which is tough love. I'm here to tell you that being delusional about yourself and I have this dream and I'm God's gift to mankind, that's great. And I support you and I hope you do become the next Elvis. You However, need a support act? But get a damn job and pay back every, everybody all their money. All of this stuff you got, you ought to sell every damn bit of it and you ought to give all of the money back to your mother. Do you need Dr. Phil's help? Text Phil to 88500 and share your story for a chance to appear on the show. Standard message and data rates may apply. We can't do this.
this show without you, our studio audience. If you are going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. If this is your dream, do whatever you can afford. I mean, if, if you want to do this, that's great. But you pay the freight. You don't bleed a, 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 a woman over here and use the fact that she loves you against her. If you want to be a rock star, great. But pay the freight. That, you know, Gene says he worked every job in the world. You work none. He was willing to do what he had to do to get the access. You're doing nothing. You're riding on people's coattails. Pay your own freight. Get well, a job. Well, I've always taught kids music. I mean, <clears throat> I still do that. It's just not very successful anymore. So now well, that you I have no quit qualifications, doing it. Well, pay I the own no freight. You don't bleed your mother of all of her money so you can go out and be a poser. If you really want to be a musician, you earn the right to do it. All of this stuff you got, you ought to sell every damn bit of it and you ought to give all of the money back to your mother. <laughs> and then pursue your dream. If it's what you want to do, pursue your dream. I'm not telling you to give it up, I'm just telling you to quit making other people pay for it. When I was sitting back there, I felt for you because I wouldn't want to be sitting in your seat. You said yourself, music and all that, and you're dreams of becoming a rock star is the most important thing. Above your daughter, above your mom and dad, above the woman who loves you, above anybody else, and you'll do anything to get there. Yes. So I was feeling for you because I saw people smirking at you and making fun of you, and maybe you're not Elvis and stuff. I get it. So you come touch the thing that I'm p most passionate about, then all the defense mechanisms go up, and I don't hear anybody because you reject my dreams. I felt for you. I don't think anybody should have a damn thing to say about your, your dreams, because we all have dreams. I want to be, and then fill in the blanks. Right. And anybody who says it, so I'm with you. I think you should get out there and, be, and put on your cape, and, you, and I'm God, I'm it. Great. By the way, I do think you've got a stage persona, some kind of vibe. You work to the camera well. Whether you can write songs or not, I don't know, but you, you've got, I got a... a song writing down. Okay, well, then we're done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would say my songs are the best thing about me. The Go best, ahead. really? Yeah. Not, yeah. not a father, not a <coughs> yeah. husband? Well, I split, I split those worlds. I just hear those worlds. Yeah. 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 Split those but, worlds. But so what I'm saying is I felt for you when somebody was attacking your dreams. Have your day job make money, go do whatever it is that you want to do. I mean, you can be Superman, but for God's sakes, even he's Clark Kent. He goes to work. <laughs> so, it's, it seems to me, sitting back there watching on the screens, is the people who love you the most maybe are, the, are your worst enablers, and I'm not the doctor here. It's been a 30-year ride, that's for sure. Well, it's never too late to straighten up and be a man. First thing we need to do, you and I be a man. Stand up, go out there and earn a living. You don't have to earn, you don't have to be the richest guy in the world, just pay the bills, and then on the side, let anybody be careful what they say about your dreams. And I'm on your side. Leave my dreams alone, that's my passion. Great, get a job. We've supported his dreams <laughs> One of the most outrageous things uh, Chris said to us before the show when we come back. <laughs> Want to get something off your chest? Sign up for the DrPhil.com community and weigh in on your favorite episodes and share your personal stories with other community members. Plus, get started on your own blog to share your thoughts on the topics that interest you most. I'll be reading those message boards. Log on to DrPhil.com today. Well, we're back talking to uh, Chris. We have his mother, stepfather, and his ex fiance here. We've been talking about his dreams, and we have a very special guest. Gene Simmons is here. Um, Gene, is, Gene is giving some, uh, giving some advice, saying, look, don't let people walk on your dreams, but be a man and get a job. And I, listen, I can embrace that 
to be a man, you got to take care of your child. You've got to take care of your child. And dream, no dream, that child didn't get a vote. She's here, you're her daddy, and you need to step up and take care of your daughter. I don't care what else you do. I love her very much. You need to step up and take care of your daughter. You need to stop, you need to stop bleeding your mother. Your mom melts when she sees you or hears your voice. Yep. The woman you love and the women who want to be with you and all this stuff, they just adore you. The guys can sometimes see through, get out of here. They'd say, you know, you, because you can't use, you're a good looking guy. You'll be very popular in jail, by the way. Yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, look, you. You may like that sort of thing and that's fine with me. But I'm just, I'm no, just, I'm no. just here to tell you that one day, and I had to deal with this in my growing up with my mother. One day, my mother's not going to be here. So I'll talk first because this chokes me up every time. So, and I have a daughter and I have a son with a woman I love who stuck by my sorry ass for 29 years, yes. never tortured me about getting married. And then finally, on the 29th year, I said, if I don't marry this woman, I'm going to die alone warped, bitter, and die a miserable son of a bitch. And I'm telling you that all the people that love you are here today, and you have a chance. You really do. The past may not matter. You've heard a lot of people, it seems. I'm not here to judge. I'm saying that today you have a chance of turning everything around, because we're all going to get a open, turn. Open for kiss? Yeah. Okay, keep going. So you'll have a clear conscience, and on your tombstone, just like on mine, we all wanted to say thank you and good night. Good night. All right. All right. Thank you. We've got to stop. And I, I tell you what I am going to do. I, I will arrange to get you some professional help. I will arrange to get you... Thank you, sir. ...a life coach. And then you can pursue whatever you want to pursue. Fair, Fair enough. enough? Fair enough. All right, guys, we've got to go. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. All right. Let's go get Robin. We get out of here. Me? Yeah, come on. Come on, Bob. Come on, we'll see you. Yeah.